You know, the world embraces fear. They promote fear. They make money on fear. And they try to tell you that fear is a good thing and it's fun and it's really no real threat. It's only a movie. But the Christian has no room, no place Mm -mm. for fear in their life at all. So today, we're gonna help you get rid of the fear in your life. With so much happening in the world, you might wonder if it's even possible to live without anxiety. Learn how you can live in total peace with the Freedom From Fear Package, a mini book by George Pearson's called No Fear Here, and Freedom From Fear, an audio teaching by Kenneth Copeland. The Bible says that God's perfect love casts out fear. Faith will overcome fear every time. Learn to keep your heart and words aligned with what God says. When you get God's Word in your heart, you have peace instead of worry, hope instead of dread, and faith instead of fear. You can be so filled with God's peace, there is no room for sickness and lack. Understand that God loves you, provides for you, and protects you. Grow your faith and declare over your life, no fear here. Then live the rest of your days free from fear. Jesus defeated all fear and has given you the victory. Request the Freedom From Fear package, free from Kenneth Copeland Ministries, at kcm.org slash TV special or when you call 800-600-7395. You've not been given a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. This free offer is good for 60 days. Outside of the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. We're Pastors George and Terry Pearsons, and we are so glad that you're with us. We're talking about freedom from fear. This is a time and an hour and a day that we need to be walking fear-free. Isn't that right? Absolutely, because the, the Jesus said that fear is going to grow and grow and grow. In fact, we can start with that verse where Jesus talked about that, mm-hmm. about fear. Yeah, Don't go you ahead. Want to read it? Go for it. Well, in Luke 21, 26, after he had been describing the things that were coming on the earth, the signs in the heavens, signs in the earth, the distressed uh, uh, among the nations, lack, depression, uh, uncertainties, all of that happening, but he, then he said in verse 26, men's hearts failing them for fear. Yeah. George, yeah. fear can have an impact on the body. You know, of course, the world's gonna have an answer for that. Here, take this drug. Here, right. and they, they right. hide fear with pharmaceuticals. You know, this will help you sleep because anxiety. Right. Anxiety's a form mm-hmm. of fear. Okay, this will help you with the depression, take this pill. And, and so this uh, pharmaceutical idea that that's an answer for fear when it's not, it yeah. just covers it up. And eventually that fear will have an impact yes. on people's bodies and they wonder yeah. why in the world yeah. did that happen to yeah. me? <clears throat> Men's hearts failing them for fear. You know, Terry, on, on this study, which by the way, all of the outlines that we're working from here They're available to you. Go to kcm.org and you can print them out. You can study them. The pastors, you can distribute them in your church. Print as many as you want to. And we have many scriptures, many thoughts, many definitions, things that we've studied throughout the years and that we've learned from Kenneth and Gloria Copeland about how to live free from fear. These are available to you and we're so excited to be able to get that to you. And going back to your point, on this particular point here, Uh, Fear definitely has an effect on the human body. Yeah, it affects the immune system. It does. It affects organs. Um, And a lot of times people never associate what happens in the body with fear because they don't recognize that they're in fear. It seems normal. It's normal for the world to walk in fear. They, as I said earlier, they promote fear. They they make money on fear. There's a whole market 
of fear, yeah. ways to promote fear. And a lot of times fear is introduced without, uh, it doesn't necessarily have the boo factor to it, yeah. but, but it's injecting fear of what might happen. And people start right. responding to that fear. And what happens? It creates more of it right. in society. And then people's bodies begin to show the effect of it, and they don't put the two together. Well, I've thought about that before, Terry, and I've thought about how if you look at presidents, mm. when they begin in office and then when they finish in office, There's it's a, almost like they look like two different people. Right. The, their, their faces <clears throat> and yeah. then their hair color. Fear can actually turn somebody's hair gray instantly. I, I mean, just in a in <clears throat> moment, right. people that have been right. through real... Uh, very horrific, um, terrifying situations. Sometimes it's been seen that their their hair just yeah. completely turns in just a matter of moments. And the connection to fear in the human body is so the, the, the connection is so powerful. The effect of it, the the immune system. I think you mentioned that about the immune system. Mm. Uh, also, uh, research has been done where it affects uh, memory and memory loss and causing different damage to parts of the brain. I mean, you can go on and on with this, um, but the fact is that fear is not good for us. And we have what it takes to get rid of it. Uh, you know, something else we haven't really said much about is that fear is a platform for all kinds of other things. Fear is a platform yeah. for yeah. jealousy. Fear is a platform for envy. Fears a, fear a platform for strife, bitterness, yeah. because a fear of what this is going to do to me, what it's going to mean to me. I am envious of what you have because you have it. I don't think I can. I'm afraid I won't have it. I'm afraid I can't get it. I'm afraid you're going to get more than me. Right. Greed, selfishness. And then the Bible spends a lot of time throughout Scripture telling us what happens uh, in uh, as a result in the body to those things, envy, greed, bitterness, rage, anger. Yeah. And a lot of times yeah. those are rooted in a foundation of fear. You know, Terry, I was talking to a doctor one time who had just come back from a seminar talking about uh, the, the effects of fear on the physical body. And I thought, well, this is very interesting. And as he was talking to me, I was making notes of what he said. Listen to this. He said, unresolved fear is like a computer program that is continually running. Fear in the body is like open apps on a phone. The battery will eventually drain. And I thought to myself, what we have to do and what we're doing here on these broadcasts is we have to shut down <laughs> all of the fear apps. The open apps, yeah. <clears throat> the open apps <clears throat> need to be shut down and we need to make absolutely sure that we're doing what we need to do to get rid of the fear in our lives. Hebrews 12, verses one and two, talking about <clears throat> eradicating fear. Um, first of all, the definition of the word eradicate means to destroy completely, totally, to be pulled up by the roots and put it to an end. So that's what we're doing on these broadcasts. We are, we are putting an end to fear in our lives and the effect that fear has on us. Let us strip off, throw aside every encumbrance, every unnecessary weight, and the sin that so readily, deftly, and cleverly clings and entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance, endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. So what we have to do is strip off everything that slows us down from running the race, and fear will slow us down. It says strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, everything that's unnecessary. Yep, yep. Fear is unnecessary. Jesus was never afraid. It really is. And we're supposed yeah. to follow his example. So uh, not, not even a little fear is good. I, I want to say something really straight, if I may. Uh-oh. Yep, here it comes. Stand back. Stand back. <laughs> Stand back. Okay, we're ready. Parents. Do not inject fear into your children's lives. Not even a little bit. Don't play with it. It's not. You know, it's, it's, it's deceiving because you scare little kids and sometimes they giggle about it. 
sometimes they may laugh about it and you think, oh, well, that didn't hurt anything. Yes, it does. Hmm. First of all, God is not a promoter of fear. And when you, you say boo to them and you come out and scare them and you entertain them with fear and you entertain them with uh, TV programs or movies that are full of fear or you participate in fear centered, fear-oriented uh, holidays like Halloween, come on. Right. That, I mean, I right, think that's right. a really clear, clear example. Halloween's all about Satan, demons, witches. And the Bible says that is an abomination yes, to God. Is. Yes, it That's is. how much he hates it. Don't entertain children with fear. And don't teach them to be afraid of things. For example, afraid of cars, afraid of getting in the street, afraid of guns, afraid of this, afraid of that. Afraid of school. Right, afraid. Well, I thought they needed to know, don't get out in front of cars. Absolutely. What's the difference? Teach them respect. Now that car is a lot bigger than you are and you get out in front of it. When you're not supposed to, it could squish you like a bug. So here's how we prevent that. You look this way, you look that way, you tell them what to do, tell them how to use their faith, but don't inject fear, don't yeah. promote, yeah. don't aim them towards fear. Right. And don't feed on fear yourself. That's right. You start to see, like there, for example, there are movies about children being kidnapped. I won't watch. I'm not gonna feed that. Right. And I find the more that I grow in the things of God, the more I can't tolerate that stuff. The more I don't wanna watch it. I don't, I don't wanna watch things that induce fear and stress and anguish, anxiety into my life, grief, sorrow. Now, I'm not gonna do it. So I would encourage you to draw that line in your family yeah. and to teach your children. And the car, just because something is cartoons doesn't mean that it can't have impact. It does. And don't teach them to be friendly with, with sorcery and witchcraft and ghosts and goblins and, and um, graveyards. Don't, don't approve of that. Draw the line. And you know, they whine and gripe about it, but you teach them why. And don't allow it. You're the boss. I used to tell George, you're bigger than she is. You're bigger than he is. You don't have to do what they tell you to. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Okay. Well... There are two statements that I want to make here right now that are so important in this. First of all, we must refuse, refuse to put up with, manage, or cope with fear. Refuse. Don't do it. Don't put up with it. Well, yes, and, and don't just try to cope with it. Don't just try to manage your fear, like the yeah. guy who was afraid of flying and heights, so he went and learned how to be a pilot. Right. So what was he doing? He was managing his fear, but he was still afraid. And that fear will show up at a most inopportune time, or it'll show up somewhere else. Or if you keep it suppressed, it'll show up in your emotions, it'll show up in your body, or in other ways. Right. The second one was, we must adopt a zero tolerance policy regarding fear. Zero tolerance for it. I won't have it. I won't put up with it. I remember one time, Brother Copeland had a problem with those outside elevators. Uh, Do you remember that? Yeah, which was so funny because he is a pilot. He's a pilot. Never showed any fear of any of that, but that, it bothered him. And so what he did to get over it was he made the decision that I'm not putting up with this fear. I will not cope with it. And he just attacked it head on. He went into the elevator, put his feet right up against the window of the elevator. And these elevators are, are like windows everywhere. You're right on the outside. And he went up and down and up and down. Speaking the word to it. Speaking the word to it until the time that that fear broke and he overcame it. And the Lord has to show you how to deal with whatever fear you, you are confronting, uh, it's not always the same for everybody the same way, but no matter what it is, you're going to have to speak to it and you're gonna have to speak the word of God to it. Yeah. And you can't just, you can't fight a fearful thought with another thought. 
you, you fight fearful thinking, fearful thoughts, fearful presumptions right. by speaking the word out loud. So I used to have, you know, I would see flashes of my children on the swing set. Falling on this in Texas, we say we were to tump over. I'd see that thing because <laughs> they'd swing and you'd see the legs come up this way and legs. And I'd, I'd see just a flash of that in my mind. And I learned to say, no, my children's lives are hid with Christ in God. Mm-hmm. My good. children's That's lives good. are hid with Christ. That's the word he gave me. Yeah. But I had to say it out loud, say it out loud. And every time I had a thought, and as they got older, it was no longer a swing set. You know, it was driving the car or, or, or I, I don't know, going places. My children, both yeah. my children went into places that were very dangerous on mission trips in high school. Went into places where bombs were going off or anti-American protests or all kinds of things that, that happened. We, we prayed about it. Lord said it's fine to go and bless the Lord. Their lives were hid with Christ in God. Yep. And I thank God his yeah. delivering hand has been there when we needed it. But most of the time, we didn't ever have anything. We even had to be, um, nothing ever actually became a full-on yeah. threat. Even when trouble was going on around us, you know, when, I mean, we were being shot at, George, in Guatemala. I was just Guatemala. thinking about that. We're being, yes. we're being shot at. I mean, I don't mean one guy. I'm talking yeah. about a whole gang of, of rebels started shooting at us with machine guns and, and grenade launcher and all kinds of things going on. Well, my body got real excited. I mean, my heart's beating. Come on, come on. I've never been in a gun battle before. We're laying in the dirt while yeah. bullets are flying around. Well, you were us. actually standing up. Well, at first I was, and you were very, my guardian angel, George, grabbed me by the hair of the head, pulled me down to the ground. But, but so my body was responding. I had a lot of adrenaline going, let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. But the interesting thing was my, my mind kind of drifted. It was useless. Hmm, I wonder what it's like to be shot. Hmm, I wonder, oh, I feel something hitting my legs. I wonder if that's bullets, la, 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 la. Gee, I'd like to see what's going on. It was stupid. Mm -hmm. Just my mind was useless because it couldn't help me. But I heard somebody praying in tongues. I mean, loud. loud. And I heard somebody else say, that's right, that's right. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. And so they're praying in tongues and it's getting louder and louder. And then I thought, oh, wait, that's me. It was me praying in tongues, out loud, bold and strong. Praise the Lord. And my, <laughs> my thought, when I realized it was me praying in tongues, my spirit was full. My spirit was engaged. Amen. And my first thought after that was, oh, thank God I didn't say something stupid like we're all going to die. We're all going to die. <laughs> my dad would come down here in Guatemala yeah. and spank my legs for saying that. <laughs> so praise God. But we came out of it. Yep. Our team. We did. We had several of us there. I forget I, I, eight or 10 of us there. We came out of it, not a problem, not a scratch. Nothing happened to us, but there were 40 other people that were shot or killed that day. That was a long time yeah, ago. Yeah. But fear was already arrested. Yes. Already not. We already yes. had fought fear. Right. So while adrenaline did kick in, our spirits knew exactly what yep. to do. Yeah. And thank you again for grabbing me by the hair of the head. Oh, yes, my, my pleasure. Yes, no, it wasn't my pleasure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we All have right. a scripture. <laughs> yes, we do. That we stand on where this is concerned. And it is Galatians 3, 13 and 14. Let me read it to you. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham may come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So the curse of the law, we've been redeemed from the curse of fear. That's why we can rise up in times like that. That's why we can take authority where our children are concerned because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of fear. <clears throat> and and you, when you look at Deuteronomy 28 and the last parts of Deuteronomy 28 are the curses of the law, you read down through those and you find out what you have been redeemed from, what you've been delivered from, what you've been rescued from, what you've been ransomed from. And listen to this, Deuteronomy 28, 66 and 67. 
And thy life shall, now this is somebody that's under the curse. Right. Thy life shall hang in doubt before you. And you shall fear day and night. And, and shall have no assurance of your life. In the morning, you'll say, would God it were evening. And in the evening, you'll say, would God it were morning. For the fear of your heart, wherewith you shall fear, and for the sight of thy eyes, which you shall see. That's the perfect picture of <coughs> yeah. dread. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's the perfect picture of um, either dreading what's coming or wishing for something else to come yeah. because of the condition that you're in. Right. And that, of course, is, is well, fear. Li listen to the NIV translation of this. And again, this is a description of the curse of the law. You will live under the curse, you will live in constant suspense, filled with dread. Now, Terry, you added in the notes the definition of the word dread. Dread is expectation of something unwanted or bad. It is a satanic trick to draw us into practicing fear. And in the curse it said, you will be filled with dread both night and day, never sure of your life. In the morning you will say, if only it were evening. And in the evening you'll say, if only it were morning, because of the terror that will fill your hearts and the sights that your eyes will see. But, but here's something that, that I think is real important to bring up right now. Is First John four eighteen says perfected love right. casts out fear. What does he mean perfected love? It means developed. Yes. Developed love. The more you can develop and are developed in the love of God, the less fear will even be present. I'm so thankful. Back at the that time, nineteen, what was that? Eighty eight, maybe eighty seven, eighty eight, when that happened with us in Guatemala. Eighty seven. Eighty seven. March tenth. Oh, <laughs> okay. You remember? Yes, I did. Well. The thing of was is that in the 80s especially, Dad was preaching a lot on the love of God. I don't forget how many years, Lord told him to stay on it. Preach on the love, preach on the love, preach on the love. And, and walking in love, what is the foundation of love? It says, uh, perfected love casts out fear. He that fears isn't perfected or developed in love. But a few verses before that, it says this, we know and believe the love that God has for us. Getting rid of fear starts with developing your faith that God loves you. God loves you. That's why I don't want you to be afraid. God loves you. That's why you don't have to be afraid. So many times when I've had fear come, come up in my thinking or in my feelings, my emotions, or come at me, um, and I have said, no, 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 that's not possible because God loves me. God loves my children. God loves my husband. God loves my ministry. God mm, loves my church. God loves you, my congregation. God <laughs> loves our viewers. God loves our partners. God loves them. Yeah. He loves them. And to say it over and over and over and over and over again and to remember that and to feed on that love of God to us and for us, then let that love flow through us. Yes. That's how you develop love. Yep. Not only the love <clears throat> you yep. have for God, that's important, God's love for you, that's critical, but also his love flowing through you for others. You can, you can stop it. You can stop the love of God by not letting that love of God flow through you to other people. Uh, and that's why we're so pleased that we can keep offering yeah. this product this yeah. week yeah. because it will help them. And then of course we talk about loves mentioned in here too. Freedom from fear and no fear here little book and the MP3. And you know, this kind of life that we're talking about, it begins with making the decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Which Jesus came because God so loved the world. That's right, that that's right. That he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him won't perish, doesn't have fear of dying an eternal death. Exactly, exactly, and that's the first step especially for those of you who have never made Jesus the Lord of your life. He is the fearless one. He is the one that comes into our lives and develops our faith to such a degree that fear can't get in, can't, can't touch us, can the wicked one touches us not. So right now, we wanna pray for you, Terry, if you would lead them in a prayer of salvation. Absolutely. And have don't, them come into the kingdom. don't have any fear of receiving Jesus 
Don't have any fear. That's well, right. I'll have to give That's this right. up or I'll have to quit that. You let, you let the life of God rise up in you uh, about what, what all of that. That, that. Don't be afraid of that. Let's connect with life himself. Let's connect with love himself. Let's connect with him who delivers us from all our fears. And it's so simple. Just believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Believe you, that Lord. he came, lived a life here as a man, went to the cross and took the sinner's punishment for yes. that sin. Thank you, Lord. Went into hell as one who had sinned, though he never sinned. Went to hell with your sin, my sin, but was victorious over death, hell, the grave, and mm. fear. Thank you, Lord. And God raised him from the dead. And now he's saying, if you'll believe that, I'll give you my life. I'll give you that freedom from fear, fear of things in this life and fear of anything to come in the next. And you receive that by making this de declaration. Jesus, say it, Jesus. Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life. I make you my Lord. I make you my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. Be my healer. Be my healer. Be my supply. Be my supply. And I give you my life, Jesus. I give you my life, Jesus. Do something with it. Do something with it. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Yep. Amen. And so we've got this package, the salvation package we wanna to send to you. It's a book by Kenneth and Gloria called He Did It All For You. And then we have brochures that'll help you study the Bible. Get started in this new life that you have in Christ, this new fear-free life that you have, this new faith-filled life that you have, and this new life that God has given to you that will absolutely, positively put you in another place, another plane, another level. I love the fact that we don't have to worry carry the care, and we do not have to fear anything because God is with us, God is for us, God is in us, and God loves you. We want to we, hear from you. We love you. Yeah. And Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Thank you for joining us on the Believer's Voice of Victory. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a gift for you. It is called the Salvation Package. Learn about the new birth and how you can live your new life victoriously in Christ. Receive your free package on kcm.org salvation. Keep your heart full of God's word and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice and it is the voice of victory. Welcome to kcm.org, your study center for victory. Get real help for real life problems. Select a topic for answers straight from the Bible. Then believe, speak, pray, learn, and apply what you've heard and read to experience real change in your situation. Each step provides pages of articles, video teachings, topical scripture lists, and recorded prayers and confessions from the Copelands. KCM.org has made it simple to tap into God's wisdom for real help in your life. KCM.org meets you where you are.